In this video series, I will teach you to become a regular expression master. Knowing how to effectively use regular expressions can make you an extremely productive software developer. This is because regular expressions can be used to search for and manipulate pieces of text based on very specific patterns. Some common patterns include variable length phone numbers, formatted dates, or words that have multiple correct spellings. Unfortunately, most people consider the syntax of regular expressions to be too complicated to bother learning. Furthermore, the exact syntax of a given regular expression can vary depending on which programming language and environment you're using. Modern regular expressions also include a number of newer features that weren't included when they were first invented. Your journey to become a regular expression master will begin with the trip back to the 1970s, when regular expressions were first invented and much simpler. We'll review the origins of the simplest possible regular expressions and understand how they became more complicated over time. In fact, let's consider the most basic possible regular expression. It's so basic that you don't even need to call it a regular expression, because it's just a simple string search. In this scenario, we're going to assume that we're living in the 1970s, back when every character was represented by exactly 8 bits, or 1 byte. This makes our analysis much easier, because every individual character that a regular expression could match is just one of the 256 numbers in this diagram. Since we're still in the 1970s, newer multibyte character encodings like Unicode haven't been invented yet, so they won't be considered. In our view, every piece of text is stored in the simplest way possible as a sequence of bytes encoded in traditional ASCII. This animation shows the C source code for a program that will match only the most basic possible regular expressions. This code isn't sophisticated enough to handle anything other than a simple string search yet. For the first example, Let's assume we want to do a regex search for the word gray in the string one gray cloud. This very simple search program starts by looking at the first character of text that we want to search. It compares this character to the first character of the string that we're searching for. Once the first character of our search pattern gets matched, the rest of the characters in the search pattern get compared against the text until a complete match is found. This works well for the simple search case shown here. However, Sometimes one simple string search isn't enough. In this example, the text that we're trying to search includes two different but common spellings of the word gray. The spelling of gray with an A is more common in American English, whereas the spelling that uses an E is more common in British English. This means that if we want to search a document that contains both spellings using only simple string searches, we'd need to search the entire document twice, once for each different spelling of the word gray. A more effective way would be to search for both spellings at once. We can easily do this by changing the code in our search program to check each position in the text for a list of characters, instead of just expecting a single matching character to appear at each position every time. We can also invent a special notation for describing the search string. Whenever the search string includes a list of characters inside a pair of square brackets, treat the square brackets and whatever's inside them to mean match exactly one character that's inside these brackets. By the way, we've just invented one of the most fundamental concepts in regular expressions, character classes. Let's review how the updated search process works. Just as we did before, we start by looking at the first character of the text and compare it to the first character of the search string. Once we find a match, we continue comparing the characters in the text against the next character in the search string. What's different about this updated version can be seen when we get to the comparison of the third character. We now have an inner loop that checks all of the possible matches for the third character. If we find the current character from the text in the list of acceptable characters at this position, we consider that a match. If not, the matching process will fail, and we restart the matching at the start of the search string again, just as we did before. It's worth pointing out that you could consider every literal character in a regular expression as though it belonged to some character class. Using this perspective, every character would belong to a character class with only one option, so it would be tedious and ugly to write square brackets around every single one when defining the regular expression. One great thing about using character classes is that we're not limited to just having a single character that has multiple possible matches. Without making any new changes to the structure of our code, we can change the first character of the word gray to also use a character class so that it can match a capital G character as well. This way, we can match four different spellings and capitalizations of the word gray at once. 
Character classes can also be useful for specifying other types of characters as well. Imagine that you wanted to search a student's book report for references to book chapters, but you don't know in advance which chapter numbers the book report would reference. You can simply list out the characters 1 through 9 in the character class, and this will allow you to find the first digit of the chapter number. For chapter numbers larger than 10, this regex will only pick out the first digit and ignore the rest, but we'll assume that the book only has 9 chapters for this example. A similar use case for character classes would be if you're in the process of editing a paper or a book. During the editing process, you'd like to make sure that any reference to a figure references the correct image. Each figure in your document is assigned a lowercase letter of the alphabet, so you'd like to find every occurrence of the word figure followed by a single letter from A to Z. You can do this with the following regular expression. Observe how our search program will now check for both an upper and a lowercase f character in the word figure. It also checks the entire alphabet for the letter that identifies the figure too. You're not limited to just using letters and numbers in a character class either. You can also use punctuation and symbols. For example, here is a regular expression that will match any addition or multiplication between a pair of two-digit decimal numbers. It will even handle inconsistent uses of a period or a comma for the decimal point. Using symbols is where most people get confused when learning regular expressions. In order to make things as clear as possible, this diagram will be used to communicate exactly which individual characters will be matched by a given regular expression. For example, here is the first character class we reviewed when searching for the word gray. Here is the character class that matches both the capital and lowercase c, the numbers 1 to 9, capital and lowercase f, all lowercase letters of the alphabet, a period and comma characters, and the numbers 0 to 9. Being precise about this concept is extremely important. For all of the examples we've seen so far, the characters that you see described in the square brackets look exactly the same as the actual characters that get matched in the text. As we're about to see, this is not always the case. For example, let's say we wanted to create a character class that matched a closing square bracket. You might be tempted to try writing this, but this doesn't work. It doesn't match any characters at all. You can probably already see why this is such a special case. The character that we want to specify in this class is one of the same characters that is used to describe the character class itself. In this case, the regular expression parser thinks that we want to end the current character class as soon as it sees the first closing square bracket character. This leaves us with an empty character class that doesn't specify any character options at all, which is not very useful. By the time it sees the second closing square bracket character, the character class that we were attempting to describe has already been closed, so the regular expression parser just assumes that this must be a literal character, since there is no other meaningful interpretation. If you try to match this regular expression against a piece of text, you'll find that it never matches anything. This makes sense, since our regular expression gets interpreted as a sequence of two characters. The first character must be one of the characters listed in the empty character class, so it can never match any character. The second character must be a closing square bracket, but it doesn't matter since the first character can never be matched. You're probably wondering, why would anyone ever want to specify an empty character class like this? Isn't that completely pointless? The answer is, you're right, it is pointless. In fact, some JavaScript linting software will warn you if you try to write a regular expression with an empty character class. If you try to write an empty character class with grep, it will give you an error message. You'll get a similar kind of error in the Ruby programming language. Now that we know the wrong way to specify a closing square bracket, what's the right way? The answer is to put a backslash character in front of closing square bracket character. The act of using a backslash in front of a character to get rid of its special meaning is called escaping the character. The next problem you're likely to encounter with character classes is when specifying a backslash character inside a character class. If you try to specify a backslash this way, you'll get an error message about an invalid regular expression. This shouldn't come as a surprise, since we just saw how a backslash character will escape a closing square bracket to remove its special meaning. The proper way to specify a backslash character is by using another backslash character to escape it. You might be wondering, 
What other special characters are there that also need escaping in a regular expression? This turns out to be a complicated question. As mentioned before, different programming languages and environments have different levels of support for all the different features of regular expressions. In fact, character escaping turns out to be one of the aspects of regular expressions that varies the most between programming languages or environments. To keep things simple, this guide will focus on a middle ground approach that explains what is true almost everywhere, but do keep in mind that some languages will have exceptions. There are many different escape characters, and the rules for escaping are different depending on whether the character is inside or outside of a character class. First, we'll review what characters need to be escaped inside a character class. There are only five characters that have a special meaning inside a character class, and we've already reviewed two of them. Since we already saw how the closing square bracket character requires escaping, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the opening square bracket character often does too. Unsurprisingly, if we put a backslash character in front of the opening square bracket in our character class, this allows us to specify the expected character. However, you may find it surprising to know that with JavaScript's regular expression engine, escaping the opening square bracket character in a character class is optional, while escaping the closing square bracket character is mandatory. This is just one example of the many quirks that exist between different regular expression engines. The reason that JavaScript allows you to use an unescaped opening square bracket character inside a character class is probably related to the fact that it also doesn't allow you to put character classes inside each other. Since one character class can't appear inside another in JavaScript, the regular expression parser just assumes that any opening square bracket found inside a character class must represent a literal character. Some programming languages, such as Java, Ruby, or .NET, support a regular expression feature that does allow nested character classes. This feature is called character class unions, subtractions, or intersections. Whenever this feature is supported, escaping an opening square bracket in a character class is mandatory. If you just want to keep things simple, stick to always escaping an opening square bracket when specifying a literal character, whether you need to or not. In the next section, we'll review the last two special characters that can appear inside a character class. This will give us a fairly complete understanding of how character classes work and put you well on your way to becoming a regular expression master.